Hi, and welcome to Vintage Doll Collector. This is part two of a video showing a huge collection of dolls I purchased in 2020. Many of them were vintage glamour dolls from the 1950s, but there were also quite a few modern fashion dolls, including several by Robert Tonner and other miscellaneous dolls. I'll try to mix it up a little to keep it interesting. Julia is a 16-inch fashion doll designed by Robert Tonner with an unusual theme. She was meant to be the heroine in a series of historical romance novels, and each doll would come with the next installment of the story. But sadly, only the first doll was produced, so if you read the first book, as I did when she came out, you never found out how the story ended. She was produced by Georgetown in 1998. With the book out of the way, you can see her dress better. I actually met Robert Tonner at a doll event once about 20 years ago and asked him when the second doll would be out and he told me the project was not going forward. I think Georgetown went out of business and that was part of the problem, but Mr. Tonner also had a lot of irons in the fire at the time and so I suspect Julia was just not on the top of his list of priorities. Too bad, she's a very nice doll and the romance novel angle was unique. She had a few extra outfits you could buy also. Here are her shoes. And she has a metal stand with her name on it. She also came with this pendant. I think the story has something to do with it, but it was so long ago that I read it, I don't remember. But you can see she's wearing it on the book cover. This is an action figure from the movie Timeline, which came out in 2003. The character of Andre Marek was played by Scottish actor Gerard Butler. The movie was a total flop at the box office, but the doll is pretty nice. It's a time travel story about a group of people who go back to the Middle Ages to rescue a professor who has discovered how to travel through time and got stuck in the year 1357. So the clothing is very medieval looking and would appeal to people who like the Lord of the Rings and Game of Thrones and that sort of thing. Let me show you all his layers of clothing. He wears a pair of white cotton undershorts with these chaps or leggings or whatever you call them tucked into his boots. Here's a close-up of his pendant. Over that he wears a blue cotton tunic. This cowl is supposed to drape over his shoulders, I think, but it's a bit tight. And his coat goes over all that. He has a bow and arrows and a sword too. Unfortunately, two of the arrows are broken. Here's another look at his face. It's a pretty good likeness, I think, and well made. This is a Candy Cover Girls doll by Integrity Toys. There's no date on the box, but I think Integrity started making them in 2001. I used to have some of the original candy dolls by Hamilton Toys, but Hamilton went out of business and Integrity licensed them with new designs by Jason Wu. She's a gorgeous brown-skinned doll with red hair, and the dress is very vintage style, which I love. It's red satin lined in gold satin, trimmed with red and gold bows with a gold net ruffle underneath. She wears white gloves trimmed in black. The white ribbon isn't part of the dress, it's just to hold her in the box. Here's the ruffle. She has a pair of red shoes, and she comes with a stand as well. Here's a closer look at her lovely face. Down the aisle is a beautiful bride doll by Madame Alexander, introduced in 2002. Here's her tag. She was made in a blonde version and an African-American version as well. She wears a traditional style wedding gown with lace trimmed tulle over satin. Underneath she wears a stiff net petticoat, nylons and closed toe shoes. Her bouquet has white flowers with white pearl centers and white leaves. Her hair's in a curly updo. Here's her box. It looks like the original price was $49.95. This guy is Edward Cullen from the Twilight movies, who was played by Robert Pattinson. A nice looking doll, although I don't think it's a great resemblance. He's wearing a gray wool jacket, navy t-shirt, and jeans. He's also got black shoes, and I guess his socks are in that other bag. 
Over here, this looks like a cuff-type bracelet, maybe? I haven't seen the movies or read the books, so correct me if I'm wrong. He has rooted hair, but it's stiff as a board. There were a few different dolls made of this character to go along with the different movies in the series. Here's a vintage glamour doll. She's really nice. I suspect her hair was cut, but it doesn't look bad at all. And it suits this 60s style formal gown. The outfit is homemade, but nicely done. The dress has a sheer pleated overskirt and plain pink underskirt. She also has a lace trimmed half slip and pink panties, nylons and white shoes. Her red painted finger and toenails match her red lips. The bow in her hair has a jeweled accent and long streamers. She has pink pearl jewelry to complete her look. The earrings are not turning her ears green, so I'm going to leave them in. She's what's known as a 14R doll. That's the mark on the back of her head. This mold was used by a number of different companies, so they can't be identified unless they have an original box or tag. This is Vanna and her new baby boy. Obviously meant to be TV celebrity Vanna White, but it doesn't actually say white on the box, which other Vanna dolls do. So was this an unlicensed version? I don't know. It has the baby's details on the back of the box. It's dated 1994, and the manufacturer is Totsy. Let's take her out so we can see her better. She's not as pretty as some of the other Vanna dolls I've seen. The way her eyes are painted, she looks a little spacey. Her hair is rooted in different shades of blonde and seems to be good quality. She wears a pink and white nightgown and fuzzy pink robe and pink shoes. Her baby boy has a white hat and blue bunting. She also has a little teddy bear for him. This 24-inch glamour doll is completely unmarked. She has a good quality body with a jointed waist and painted toenails. I like that she has a side parted hairstyle. That's a little unusual. It seems like it's been trimmed over on the other side though, but she may have had a veil that covered most of her head, so who knows. Her wedding gown appears to be factory made, so it's probably original. She's nice, don't you think? Here's a Ken Fashion Avenue outfit dated 1995. A preppy look with the blue Oxford shirt and pleated khaki pants. The back of the box shows some of the other Fashion Avenue outfits. I think I still have this purple gown that I bought at Toys R Us when it was new. Here's Little Red Riding Hood, the porcelain version designed by Diana Effner and made by Knowles in 1989. She was part of a series of fairy tale characters. She has an adorable face and a really nice outfit. Her red hair is styled in curls. These dolls were produced in huge numbers and you can get them for next to nothing now. This is a naked Brenda Star doll by F&B from 2001. Many of the modern dolls in this collection had lost their clothes. The paperwork is here, which says she was originally dressed in her cocktail time outfit, a black and white gown. She has her wrist tag. It tells about Brenda's history and about her creator, Dale Messick. And this, which I guess is supposed to be a necklace? She has an absolutely beautiful face. Look at the way her eyelashes are painted with little crow's feet beneath each eye. Very unusual. The doll was sculpted by Sandra Bellotto. After Tonner bought F&B, Brenda got a jointed body with the same head sculpt. Then later, she got a new Tonner sculpted head, which looks more like his other dolls, but I think this earlier one is prettier. She has pierced ears and is 16 inches tall. She's easy to identify with her name on the back of her head. The date is 1998, but remember I said this doll was made in 2001? When you see a date on a doll, that's the copyright date of the head or body design, not the date of manufacture. The same designs could be used for several years. When I started buying Barbies in the 1990s, the new dolls in the stores then still had the 1966 copyright date on them. Here's another naked fashion doll, the same scale as Brenda. This is Marnie, 
part of the Lifestyles in Fashion line by King State. She has kind of a more mature look, I think. She does have a jointed waist, which is nice. She's marked 2000 on her lower back. On the back of her head, along with the company name, she's marked number 15 of 2500. So she was one of the first ones made. She has pierced ears. All the dolls in this line were made with the same head mold, but they had different hair colors and skin tones. The others were Maggie, Marissa, and Mickey. They were sold in a variety of outfits, but I don't think they had any extra outfits available. This cloth doll is so adorable by Just For Keeps. I'm not sure when she was made. There's no date on the package or on the doll. These were sold in craft stores, and instead of patterns to make the clothing, they sold fabric panels with the pieces printed on them to just cut out and sew together. Here's the back. Interesting to note that it says, Warning for decorative purposes only. This is not a toy. Keep out of the reach of children. Too bad, because she would make a nice doll for a child. This black-haired glamour doll looks very much like a Revlon. The only mark I could find on her is B18 on her lower back. She's made of heavy vinyl with a jointed waist. Her clothing is factory made, but I have no idea if it's original or not. She has some white waxy stuff on her body, but I don't think it's mold. I think it's a breakdown of the vinyl. She doesn't have any kind of moldy odor. Her pierced ears have turned green from the brass earring posts. I have since taken them out. Black hair is very unusual on a white doll of this era, so it'll be worth making the effort to get the green out. Let me know in the comments if you know who she is. I'm thinking she might be a Canadian doll. This is a Vogue Jan doll. She's had a haircut, unfortunately. I like her outfit. It's not a Vogue outfit. It has big buttons on the back. It might be a Unita or a Totsie outfit. They usually had buttons. I love this little unmarked Little Miss Revlon type doll. Such a sweet face. She's in great condition, no green ear or anything, and she has nice red hair and a ponytail. The dress is factory made, but I don't think it's original. It's really tight around the waist. But it looks good on her. She's a keeper. I haven't decided yet what to do about this 14-inch Betsy McCall doll. I love the American character Betsy's, but she's a bit of a mess. She's dirty and faded, her hair's a disaster, and her dress is even worse. She's still worth fixing up, just don't know if it'd be better to let somebody else give it a go. For now, she's still with me. This is not a Barbie. This is a bubble-cut clone head on a Barbie body from the 1960s. She might be Wendy by Elite. I had a bubble cut clone when I was a kid, but I think she was a blonde. My mom, who generally didn't knit because she worked full time and had a long commute besides, knitted her a pink gown. I remember the dress better than I remember the doll. It probably got sold at a yard sale along with all my other dolls and toys. If I could have one material possession from my childhood back again, it would be that dress that my mom made. I bet somebody else's mom crocheted this dress and it was loved. I'll keep it as a reminder of my own childhood doll. Hey, it's Ken. This version of Barbie's boyfriend is from the early 1960s. He needed a bath badly, but he cleaned up quite nicely, as you can see. When I make videos like this, usually I clean up the easy ones before taking pictures, but the hard cases are set aside for later. Otherwise, I'd never get any videos done. What do you think of his knit overalls? He has cowboy boots, too. This is another Little Miss Revlon type doll, what's known as a Circle P doll, because she's marked with the letter P in a circle on the back of her head. Her dress and earrings are modern. Looks like her ears are starting to turn green. There are about 13 pins in her hair holding it in place. Her face is very pale. It has almost a waxy look to it. This is a tagged Little Miss Revlon checked coat. It's got a few small stains on the front. I'll try to get them out. 
I've seen the same coat with only one snap, but this one obviously has three. Here's the back. It's tagged ideal. This is a sissy doll by Madame Alexander. Poor thing has lost all the eyelashes off one eye and her face has been repainted or at least partially repainted and not very well. This one is beyond my skills and patience level, so as much as I would love a redhead sissy, I would rather she go to someone who can give her what she needs to be beautiful again. Her body's in good shape except for her dirty fingernails. This is the 14-inch version of Sweet Sue with Flexible Foot by American Character, also sometimes called Subteen Sweet Sue. She's very similar to their Sweet Sue Sophisticate doll, except she has a smaller bust line and the jointed ankles which enable her to wear heels or flats or ballet slippers. She's missing one foot. I'm hoping that someone has a parts doll that can make her whole again. She has a nice face, although it looks like her lips might have been repainted too, and her hair's in pretty good shape. Here's a pretty hard plastic doll from the 1950s. Her original outfit is stapled to her. The shoes are molded as part of her feet. She's not marked and may have been made by Duchess or another company. Here's another one, probably by the same maker. She's dressed as a bride. Here you can see the staples in her back. Her veil is stapled on too. They were making them as quickly and cheaply as possible. This is a Miss Ginny doll by Vogue. She was made in 1975. She has what's known as the contemporary face, a more grown-up look than the earlier Miss Ginny dolls. She's been redressed in this cute outfit. Here's another 14R doll. I thought she was wearing a wig at first, but her hair's just been restyled with a curl all the way around. She's got a pretty face, but the problem is she can't open her eyes any more than that. They're not stuck, I've tried. That's just as far as they go. Maybe I should redress her in pajamas because she looks half asleep. Here's a Nanette doll by Aaron B., a very pretty hard plastic 1950s girl. The outfit she's wearing is actually an American character sweet suit outfit. But I don't have a nice sweet suit at the moment, so she may get to keep it. It has matching bloomers. This big girl is the Beauty Pilot doll by Deluxe Redding. She's 24 inches tall or so. She originally came with a beauty pilot chair and a hair dryer and curlers and things. This one unfortunately has a little bit of damage. Do you see the slice in the front of her shoulder? But it doesn't seem to affect her arm moving and when she's dressed it won't be noticeable. I'll find her something to wear before I find her a new home. This is a deluxe red and glamour doll, a whopping 30 inches tall. She was sold under various names, including Betty the Beautiful Bride, Sweet Rosemary, and Darling Debbie, according to what color dress she was wearing. They were always in long gowns with rows of ruffled lace. This dress is very similar to the original style, but it's a homemade version, made with tulle instead of with lace. She has a one-piece stuffed vinyl body, only jointed at the neck. The 30-inch deluxe Redding dolls all seem to have dark blonde hair, except for the very rare black dolls who have black hair. Unless you find these dolls mint in box, they're almost always missing their shoes. They were plastic heels with just an elastic strap across the instep, so they fell off easily. Back to a couple of the newer dolls. This is Strider, Ranger of the North, by Tonner. He's a character in the Lord of the Rings books. Strider is a nickname. The character's real name is Aragorn. He was played in the movies by Viggo Mortensen. Not a great likeness, I don't think. His body has many joints like an action figure. This is another Lord of the Rings character by Tonner. This is an elf, Arwen Evenstar. She's Aragorn's girlfriend. She was played by Liv Tyler in the movies, and this is a very good likeness of her 
Like all good elves, she has pointed ears. She has a multi-jointed body as well. She's 16 inches tall. Her feet are interchangeable, so she can have flat feet or high heels. Well, obviously this doll was the favorite of the woman who originally collected them. There are 11 of them all together. Here are the first five. They have a variety of markings. Six of them have the Arrow Plastics logo with various numbers. Two just have numbers, and three are unmarked. Arrow was a supplier for Deluxe Redding. I actually have a couple of these dolls already, so I will compare these dolls to mine and keep whoever's in the best condition. I'd like to have one of each hair color. And here's the other six. They were sold by Deluxe Redding under various names in the late 1950s or early 1960s. They have a hard vinyl body with a softer vinyl head and a twist waist and are 24 inches tall. They're so big they'll be expensive to ship, but I'm going to start doing doll shows again this year, so I might bring them along to those. This doll is wearing her original dress and shoes. She has such a gorgeous face, I think she will probably be the keeper among the lot. In this dress, she was sold as Sweet Judy. With a wardrobe of four dresses, including this one, she was sold as Deluxe Fashion Parade. The Fashion Parade dolls were sold as either blonde or brunette. Here are her shoes. I just bought a lot of four pairs of shoes to fit these dolls on eBay, so some of the ones that are barefoot now will get shoes. This doll is wearing what was her original outfit, but it's been altered substantially. She is the Rags to Riches doll by Deluxe Redding, and the dress was originally an evening gown with a big blue velvet bow. Someone cut most of the skirt off and added sleeves to make a majorette or skating costume out of it. They also added red felt boots. When you compare the dolls closely, you can see there are differences in their faces, in the eye colors, the way the eyelashes and lips are painted. The doll in the fur coat is one of the unmarked ones, so she may have been made by a different supplier. But even among dolls that all have the Arrow logo, there are differences. If you want to learn more about Deluxe Redding Glamour Dolls, there's a wonderful website you can visit at VinylDeluxeDolls.com. This doll has a bell Margie or Marjorie head on another doll's body. Her original body was damaged, and the other doll's head was damaged, so I put them together. Margie has a beautiful face that resembles Madame Alexander's sissy doll. Someone crocheted this pretty pink dress with a matching stole. This is another Tonner doll from the Twilight series. This is Alice Cullen. She was played by Ashley Green in the films. Not as pretty as the real Ashley, in my opinion. She has the same body as Arwen and many of the other 16-inch Tonner ladies. Here's a close-up of the interchangeable feet. The flat feet have jointed ankles. This is Monica Merrill by Tonner. She was a fashion doll sold in several different outfits. Unlike the Twilight and Lord of the Rings dolls who have painted eyes, Monica has inset acrylic eyes. She has the same body as the other dolls I've shown you. She has the interchangeable feet, but this doll has the high heel feet on. I saved the biggest doll for last. This is a My Size Bride Barbie. She's 36 inches tall and is dated 1994. The side of the box explains that a child can wear the outfit too. Barbie's bridal gown is actually four separate pieces, a bodysuit, a skirt with a drawstring waist, and two puffy sleeves. She also wears her original earrings and veil. The trim on the bodice is heart-shaped. She comes with a heart pendant necklace. The shoes are terry cloth slip-ons that didn't stay on her feet too well. She has the superstar face with a pretty smile. I actually shipped this doll to Canada. The shipping was more than the doll because she's so huge. Well, we finally reached the end. Do you have any of these dolls in your collection? Which one was your favorite? Leave me a comment and let me know. If you want to be notified when I have new videos posted, click the subscribe button and the little bell icon. See you next time.